At six, a Kentucky public school district facing backlash for advocating against a controversial ballot measure. A social media post calling on people to vote no on Constitutional Amendment 2. You'll see it on your ballot in November. It asks if you're in favor of allowing state lawmakers to provide funding for students outside public school systems, meaning private and charter schools getting those tax dollars. Isaiah Kim Martinez is following the latest pushback on this effort. So Isaiah, what did you find out? Well, Connie, a school district down in Somerset, Kentucky, that's about two hours southeast of Louisville, has taken down a heavily scrutinized social media post. Now Kentucky's attorney general is putting all public school districts on notice, saying tax dollars cannot be used for political advocacy. This is a screenshot of the post from Pulaski County Schools on its official Facebook page since taken down. It reads no on Amendment 2. It didn't take long for Kentucky Attorney General Russell Coleman to put out a statement saying the district broke state law. Governor Andy Bashir taking exception to the scrutiny. Let's put this all in context. This was a Facebook post. This wasn't spending thousands of dollars on, on a mailer. This was a district expressing its opinion on a Facebook post. Under state law, tax dollars cannot be used to advocate for or against public questions on a ballot. I talked about this with Kentucky Senate President Robert Stivers. Public funds should be used in the education system for public education. You don't use government taxpayer dollars for political campaigns. If passed, the amendment opens the door for public money to go toward private schools. Some say this will give parents more choices to give their child the best education. Others say this will risk cuts to public school funding. The bottom line is the message that was put out, even if it might not have been put out in the right way, is correct. Districts like Pulaski County will be defunded through Amendment 2. I went ahead and asked school districts across our area if they have a stance on Amendment 2. A JCPS spokesperson said, We oppose any effort to take public funds and resources away from public schools, which educate all children, regardless of their background, family income, or special needs. We believe Constitutional Amendment 2 is one of these efforts. Me and my colleagues wish that Jefferson County Public School Systems would be ultimately the most successful system it could be, but it's not been. And we've tried to change that, and that's the impetus behind Constitutional Amendment Number 2. Constitutional law professor Sam Markison believes there is a way districts can educate on this without crossing a line. If they simply put out information, here's what the amendment would do, here's what it would has the effect it would have on our budget. I think they could do that. Real quick here, we have a couple more statements that'll be up on our website from a couple other school districts, what they felt about all this. It's gonna be a big issue. Uh, certainly in the next few months. All right, and you've been busy today. You were covering another part of uh, the governor's mm -hmm. story. Uh, tell us what he's been up to. What have you found out? Well, essentially since the vice presidential sweepstakes ended, Connie, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of speculation whether the governor would consider a cabinet position with Kamala Harris if she were elected. And he kind of put that to rest, at least for now, saying he does not intend to seek out any position in Washington, D.C. All right. So he says he's staying. And we actually have some sound of okay. it, I believe, right here. I hope I did us proud. That was my goal the whole time, to make sure people were looking up to Kentucky, not down at us like they've done for, for far too long. And I don't remember a time when a Kentuckian was going through this process. So it was just pretty neat to see Kentucky uh, written with all of those uh, other states. Uh, with that said, I don't intend to accept uh, any position in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to be. He says he doesn't intend to. Now, Bashir went on to say he's looking forward to finishing out these next three and a half years as Kentucky's governor. Connie. All right. Thanks so much, Isaiah. Well, next week is a big one for Governor Bashir and other Kentucky Democrats. And WHAS 11 will be right there, too. Bashir, Mayor Craig Greenberg, and Congresswoman Morgan McGarvey, they'll all travel to Chicago for the Democratic National Convention. And Isaiah will be there with senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton. They'll have coverage from the convention starting Sunday.